take two. <laughs> hey, it's getting a little windy out here. I was thinking about going fishing, but I don't know if it's too windy or not. I, actually, it's, it's not that windy. I was just, just blowing around some leaves. But the wind can make a really big difference when you go fishing, especially at a weird island like Oak Island, it faces south. So you think the wind's blowing one way, it's gonna affect fishing somehow. Well, it's not because it's different. Let me explain, let's go. The first thing you need to understand is that Oak Island is a south facing beach. Now, when I was growing up, I thought everything faced east. We're on the eastern seaboard. And I thought if I got in the ocean and I started swimming, I would eventually reach Europe. I'd get to Britain. Like, isn't that how the Mayflower got here? That's not the case when it comes to Oak Island. See that little red dot? That's Oak Island and the little point is pointing down. If you got in the water here and you started swimming, you'd reach Cuba. Maybe you'd get to Florida, but you'd be going south. Now the wind affects us differently. Here's Carolina Beach and they do face east. And if you got in the water and you swam, you would reach Britain or Africa probably, but their wind coming from the east pushes the waves right up against the beach. And if they have an east wind, they're gonna have a lot of waves on their beach but that will affect us totally different. Now, if you take that same east wind and you apply it to Oak Island, here you can see it was just blowing across. It's not blowing up to the shore or away from the shore, it's just blowing across. It's probably gonna drag your line uh, from east to west. A west wind does the exact same thing. It's gonna be blowing your line to one side or the other. It's not gonna have a whole lot of effect on bigger or less waves, they're just gonna be normal. However, a north wind, when it blows from the north, really flattens down that water. Some people will be like, it's like glass out there. It's like, uh, it's like a lake. It doesn't make the surfers happy, but it's easier to fish in because that wind is not blowing the water up against the shore and it's not causing big waves or big white caps. The wind that does that and the wind that is difficult to fish in is a south facing wind coming from the south. Now a south wind coming up from Cuba is gonna blow the waves right up onto the shore. And that is gonna cause big waves. It's gonna cause uh, big white caps. It's gonna great for surfers, I guess, uh, causes riptide and causes those people in the rescue squads a lot of trouble when people you know, go out on their inflatable ducks and stuff like that. Now here you can see if you have more wind, you're gonna have more white caps and even more waves. And this can make it quite difficult to fish in. Let me show you an example of what I'm talking about. I have the app, the WWAY Storm Tracker app, and it does an hour by hour readout of what the wind is gonna be. And here you can see between three and four, you have south facing winds between 13 and 14 miles an hour. That's pretty strong winds. Now, can you fish in weather like that? Well, yeah, you can. Are the fish there? Yeah, they are, because fish actually like movement. So when there's a lot of churning up in the, in the surf there, the fish are gonna be in there looking for that food. But it's gonna be hard to, because a regular weight, even a four ounce weight like this, may not hold down in the sand, in the surf with those waves. So I'll sometimes use a spudnik. This is actually a five ounce spudnik, which is really heavy, but I know that it will hold in the sand. I think it's kind of ridiculous to have such a big thing when I'm using sand fleas <laughs> and shrimp. But uh, here's my new sand flea can. If I haven't shown you this, uh, it's pretty easy to use. Um, and I like it because it's small and I can just attach it to my bucket and it carries really well and I don't have to have a whole big rake. Basically, you just look for the sand fleas. When you find them, you scoop up the sand into the sand flea container and you shake it off in the water and all the sand goes out through the holes and the sand fleas don't. So then you have yourself a couple of little sand fleas and you can easily throw those on a hook and make great bait. So uh, that's what I did and uh, I, I went out there and, and it worked. Um, I actually have a triple drop rig and I'll tell you the secret. I put a sand flea in the middle and I put a piece of shrimp on the top and a piece of shrimp on the bottom. I got some fresh shrimp from Clem's um, and, I, and it just re works really well. I mean, maybe I would have the same effect without the sand flea and the, the, the fish aren't always hitting the sand flea, but I think having the sand flea on there attracts them to them and then they're like, huh, I think I'll have some shrimp while I'm here. Now, that was a whiting and obviously not a really big one. And I caught another one, <laughs> obviously kind of small as well. Um, but at least I was catching whiting and not croaker. I also threw out some big bait. I'm just going to show you this because look how they stripped this off. I've had my bait bit before, but I've never had it like stripped off like this. And I thought maybe it was a crab or something, but I just hadn't had it out there that long. So I'm not sure what did that, but something stripped it off. 
Now, even though I was catching a lot of whiting, and although they were really small, the biggest problem I was having was this current pulls your weight, and this is not the spud dink, this was a regular triangle weight on this, four ounce triangle weight, to the shore. Like if you look, uh, the rod's pointing one way, and look at my hand, it's going uh, basically perpendicular at a 90 degree angle. That's where my line got pulled all the way to the left, uh, all the way to the left with that wind was blowing it in. So that was making it really difficult to fish. And at this point, I just decided to, to give up and go get something to eat. So I went to this really great place, which I don't know why I haven't done a video about this before. It's Bob's Dogs. <laughs> if you've never gone to Bob's Dogs, well, let me tell you what, you're missing out. You need to go there. It's a small little place at the top of the island, right when you come across the old bridge. Um, and and, you, and it's like I said, look around here. There's a couple of seats. They got a couple of seats outside, but uh, it's nothing fancy, um, but it's not like you're going to take a date there, but you're going to have a great lunch. They've got all these different types of hot dogs, and I guess they have burgers and other things too, but why would I get a burger at a place called Bob's Dogs. So I decided to get the parrot dog. I'm going to get two of those. And the other thing that is fantastic about Bob's Dogs is their lemonade. They make this really great lemonade. So uh, I decided to order my, my two parrot dogs there and my lemonade. And uh, I signed for it. I paid with my credit card, which is fine. And then she went and got my dogs. And uh, while she was doing that, I, I snuck a dollar into the tip bucket. I didn't even let her know. So it's shh, between you and me. <laughs> I gave her my pay. She gave me my lemonade. And I was like all ready to go sit down and just wait a couple of minutes for those dogs to magically appear um, on my on my table, which they, uh, they, they did. But before they did, I got to get a taste of this great, delicious lemonade. Oh, my God, this is so good. Especially after being out in the salt water all day, you get dehydrated. That's stuff so good so she just gave them to me as like a to-go thing which is fine um I, I didn't tell her to go or to stay so they might have come in a basket if i had said i was going to stay but it didn't matter to me i just wanted to eat those bob's dogs so i got one out i opened it up a big reveal there it is it looks like a mess i know it looks like a mess but it is outstanding and i just got myself a nice bite there and it was great so now that i got my strength back up with my food i know i can go back out and i can get some fish so let's talk about a different type of wind, not the south facing wind. Let's talk about the north wind. Now, it will go back and forth. You'll have this north wind and sometimes a south wind. So have this north wind coming in. Check my WWA uh, radar tracker there. And you can see between like 10, 12 o'clock, you got a northwest wind at five miles an hour. And then it starts to switch in the afternoon to, a, to like a south wind. So you're going to have that. You're going to have some switch over. But look how flat the water is when I first got out there with this north blowing wind. There, there are some waves right at the tip but mostly it's pretty flat. I mean, I could walk way out there and not get pummeled by waves. And uh, it just makes, I feel, fishing a little easier uh, when, when you don't have to have all these waves crashing and pulling your line over to the side. Now, um, I did just catch <laughs> a stingray. Please tell me, I know I need to do um, a, one of those cook clean videos on stingray because you can't eat these things. I just, I just don't have it in me at this point. There's so many good fish out there that... I just don't I don't want to do it but I got this little guy and I let him go very elegantly there and I put the bait back out and it wasn't long before I had another fish and he actually started running you can see I actually had to go across my other line there uh, to get him and a lot of times when a fish runs I'm feeling like that's eh, a good fish but then sometimes you just know like especially if they lay down right when they get to the top that you're just dealing with another ray <laughs> and of course there he is he's laying down I'm just gonna drag him out of the sand uh, flip them over. They got really rubbery, gummy lips. So I always use the pliers when I go to get the, 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 the hook out. And I also use the pliers to grab them by the barb. I'll push it way down to the tip so I don't break it. And I just carry him out like this way. He's not going to slash around. There was a video on YouTube with someone holding one of these things up to their face. And it like whacked him in the face with its tail. I'm just not going to mess around with that barb. Now, this last fish caught me off guard. I, I just dropped it in and he bit. Look how awkward I am holding that reel right there. I finally got a chance to take it out and put it on the other side and reel him in. But he just hit as soon as it hit the water. So I was not prepared for it. Always be prepared. But I finally got the fish that I was looking for in the calmer water. So you can get out there. There are some whiting in the surf. Believe me, besides all the croaker. And this was a nice about a foot long one. So get out there and let's do some fishing. Watch the wind.